The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Have a large credit card balance after the holidays? Let Navy Federal Credit Union help you rebalance your priorities. Make a plan to do away with high interest credit card debt by transferring your balance to a Navy Federal credit card. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening, watching, and most importantly, subscribing. If you haven't already, make sure you followed us on YouTube because we're dropping new videos every single week. We got a brand new podcast studio and it is sweet. We keep making changes every week to make it look cooler and it's just getting better and better. So make sure you're following us there. We've got a Patreon question of the day from Shailene, which... Here it is. She asks, what is your favorite to-go order at Whataburger? Hmm. They are not from Texas. So do y'all even know what Whataburger is? I do. I do know what it is, but I don't. Thank you. (laughs) See, I wouldn't have said that. First of all, respect. First of all, have you ever heard of it? (laughs) Heard of it, but I don't think I've ever been to one. Never been to one. What? Just, well, mine. <laughs> <laughs> Whataburger catered. <laughs> mine is the uh, Whataburger Junior. No onions, add cheese, and a small diet Coke. Uh, I'm a patty milk guy. Mm-hmm. Number two, shredded cheese. No lettuce, tomato, pickle. Large fry, side of gravy. Every it's once in a while, <laughs> I like to have their taco. What? They have a taco? They have a taco, oh, yeah. but... A couple of years ago, they changed it and they cha- they ended up because they used to put fresh veggies on it, like lettuce and tomatoes. And then ha- like at some point they changed it to where they put grilled veggies on it. I don't like the grilled veggies on it. So when I order the taco, I say the old way, the lettuce, the tomatoes and the shredded cheese instead of the new way of it being like hot before it wasn't like that. Got it. So Dairy Queen has good tacos. Low Dairy key, Queen if you didn't know. Does sometimes. One time I got it and they, the meat was cold and I did not like that. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know Dairy Queen had tacos. Yeah. yeah. They're excellent tacos. Yeah. Is there like any like really good fast food restaurants that are like kind of unique to y'all's area? Well, we we have Dairy Queen and and we have a serious Texas barbecue. Oh, you do? Oh. Yeah. In Colorado? Yeah. yeah. Is it good? It's really good. Yeah. It's amazing. But y'all have one of the, there's not a, a signature Colorado, Colorado place. It's a White Castle uh, uh, up in the I don't think Colorado north, right? owns, like, they, they can't claim. Nothing? Nothing <laughs> as far as fast food no. goes. Yeah. There's no signature Colorado fast food. Nothing. No. That's sad. That's why they're healthier. That's why your way is yeah. There you go, right there. That's why they're way healthier than me. We have no, blue bell ice cream and we have Whataburger and uh, blue, blue bell down all here. The text yeah, it's just yeah. hard to cook at altitude. I'm sure. Yeah, it takes a lot longer to boil water up there, so <laughs> yeah, you can't do anything fast up there. <laughs> oh. Everything's in slow mo. <laughs> well, Shailene, thank you so much for your Patreon question. If you want to ask your question to the guest, to the host, make sure you join us Patreon.com/slash Team Never Quit. We've got ex- exclusive gear, behind the scenes content, all kind of stuff when you join us on Patreon. So make sure you guys check that out. We've got an awesome twins on the fam on the, in the, on the show today which is fun because you know we've got some twins in our family here and uh, i think that's going to be awesome they are three time olympians in the sport of biathlon twin sisters lanny and tracy barnes have completed in several olympics together before both girls made history and inspired the world when tracy selflessly gave lanny her spot on the soki did i say it right so i did not write so sochi so so cheap. Russia, 2014. Hit with your, your chi. Chi. With your chi. Yeah. Uh, Olympic team after Lanny fell ill during the final trials and wasn't able to complete all the races. Welcome to the show, Lanny and Tracy. Thanks for having us. We're so excited to be here. This is, yeah. this is exciting, for sure. Well, and I really wanted Morgan here because obviously the twins. The twin dynamic, yes. The twins and twins thing, but Morgan couldn't make it because he had um, real work to do. Uh, I had to miss out on this. So. That's what this is. I know. He's the older brother. So when it comes to this, he's like, ah, I, you know, I, I, does that still work with y'all? Okay. Who's the oldest? Tracy, uh, you the oldest? I'm five minutes older. Five? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm the baby, too. <laughs> yeah. That's a thing. 
Do y'all still do that? Like, oh. I don't get to drive anywhere. He still opens his <laughs> presents before I do. Kind of <laughs> talks down to me every now and again. You know, I took on more of the responsible role, I feel like. Yeah, but really? the, the oh, only yeah. reason why, though, is we didn't know that I was older until we were probably 12. Right? Oh, stop we, it. We, we didn't even look into that. Yet. Yeah, <laughs> we, we just assumed that she was older because she took on the older sibling role. Like, she did everything. She kind of looked out for me. You, know, you can kind of like, tell, Aww. right? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, it's a vibe. We have that, too. Yeah. I remember the day we found out, we're like, are our parents actually our parents? You know, every, everything <laughs> fell apart. We're like. <laughs> oh, we rolled through that as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, did they know y'all were both there? No. That's no. the same thing happened to us. I was yeah. surprised. Yeah. Yeah, they told our mom she was having a really big boy. Oh, really? Yeah, they could only detect one heartbeat. Heart, yeah, same with us. <laughs> so until she came out, they didn't know that, that they were having twins. Oh, my god! It's cool, right? I came in on the hills, too. Yeah, yeah, they didn't know. I think my dad fainted when he found out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, just imagine thinking you're going to have a really big boy and then getting two little girls. Yeah, two girls. <laughs> that is so funny. And you have another sister. Is she older or younger? Older by 14 months. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah they're only planning on having two. So technically, I could have been, you know, the mistake, the whoopsie. Oh. <laughs> did they already have a name for the boy? Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. Oh, wow. We, we spent an extra day or two in the hospital because they wouldn't release us until my parents had names. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, how funny. Yeah. We all early? Nope. Do it full term? Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice oh, wow. work. Yeah, yeah, my own mama couldn't hold us. We were two months early. Really? Like, oh, well, three yeah. three pounds, four pounds when we came in. Yeah, one was three something and one was four something. Ooh, that's tiny. Yeah, that's we what were people just... look at us now and they can't believe that, but that's the way it is. <laughs> yeah. We were, she was smaller. I clamped down on that umbilical cord. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's why I was getting crushed in there too, right? <laughs> How funny. Establishing dominance already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So I um, know y'all, obviously, from the She Never Quit event, which is one of my favorite things that we are able to do. So bummed last year we couldn't do it because of COVID. Um, But I want everybody else to hear y'all's story. Like, your parents pretty much lived, like, the real, true American dream. And from, you know, you shared some on Instagram. And uh, if you could just tell us that story and we can go from there. Well, I think we were very fortunate because we had incredible role models. Our our parents, they they worked hard at everything they did and they um they taught instilled that in us too. I think they my mom was a, a school teacher and she she was one of those teachers that you either feared her or you loved her. Yeah. <laughs> she well, was, what grades and what she teach? She taught um <laughs> First off, middle school science, and then she did um, biology in high school. In high school, and um, and then yeah. like AP <laughs> science and stuff like that. And she was, we had her for a semester, and she was the hardest teacher we ever had. Like, oh, I was, oh, like the whole time, I was really? Like, they yeah. made you? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't know whether to call her mom or Mrs. Barnes, and it just it was <laughs> weird. <laughs> but she, it was the hardest A I ever had to earn because she. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't, you know, help us out with our homework or anything. Oh She's God. like, the other kids don't get my help. So, <laughs> you know, you're on your own. But oh, wow. um, she probably tried to gauge the way because offer of y'all how she would teach. If you guys could pick that up in the rest of the class, that was probably the scale and yeah. harder on y'all. Right. But Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I mean, she she was a phenomenal teacher. She she really pushed her students and stuff. And then my dad, he uh, he started out as a shop teacher and then um started his own construction company and, and just worked really hard. You know, he, uh, yeah, he started out in a little tiny leaky trailer yeah. in Durango and then just kind of built their way up, you know, working, especially my dad working nights and all sorts of weekend projects and things like that, just to try and make it, especially with three kids in diapers and trying to start a new business and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, they're incredible role models. And, and yeah, I mean, we just, Growing up, we we did anything and everything we could, especially outdoors. And and uh, you know, was living in the outdoors, you you learn a lot of things about how to take care of yourself. And and you know, if you you fall, you have to get yourself back up. And and uh, it was it was great having um, my twin sister and our older sister because we 
you know, we we pushed each other in everything we did. It, it, it was one big competition after the other. Oh, how fun. <laughs> so, yeah. And does your older sister have the same interest? She, she does. Like, we grew up uh, doing a lot of sports together. And, uh, you know, we're, all three of us are best friends. And we, we always say that she went the academic route. And we went the sports route. She had the good looks and the brains. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, do y'all get along pretty good, though? Yeah, yeah oh, definitely. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah, she became a, a ear, nose, and throat surgeon. Oh, wow. So, yeah. she's awesome. Overachieving nexus right there. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then, yeah, we went the, the the jock route, I guess. The went after sports. and um, Yeah, grew up shooting with our dad. And so we tried out shooting competitions um and the, the first one we did were just not not our thing we wanted a little bit more excitement with it and so someone told us we were kind of juggling a soccer ball and stuff in between rounds of shooting and they said you're kind of in the wrong sport instead of just sitting there you know um getting your heart rate down that sort of thing and so, <laughs> so they she. said have you ever heard of biathlon oh there's cross-country skiing in Colorado you don't ski up those mountains you take the chairlift up you know why would you ski up them so we we looked around for the sport and found it and tried it out. It was absolutely miserable. We sucked at it. Oh, I mean, really? We were we started it in high school. Um, we downhill skied growing up, but never cross country skied. And so, um, yeah, starting a new sport when you're especially in high school. When you're That's my question. Is that that sport cool. is hard? Yeah. I mean, it's just just brutal. Even yeah. even if you're good at it. So explain this. How do you stick? I mean, what is it? That's my, what, what's the grab? I think for us, uh, we, we grew up playing soccer and we were really good at it. And um, it was, it came easy to us. I, we, we practiced a lot and practiced really hard, but um, we were natural at it. And when we, we started biathlon, it, we, we were horrible, like Tracy said. And I think what drew us to that is that it was a challenge. It was a really oh, really good challenge and we're like we're not gonna quit this until we figure it out yeah and, and we did see early success but it wasn't because we were any good we just stuck our head down and gutted it out through through a race you know we'd be flailing and <laughs> flopping all over falling all over the course you know but we'd get back up and you know pass someone again and again until you know so that we saw early success but it wasn't because we were any good we just kept going y'all motivate each other one of you is not doing well does the other hard on like do you get hard on her and vice versa no no not necessarily like that I think um the way we kind of look at it is if one of us is doing well um the other one could do just as good because we're exactly the same yeah. like with the U.S. Olympic Committee they published um, a lot of our physiological tests because they were exactly the same. Like we go on a treadmill, heart rate would be the same, VO max would be the same, lactic acid would be the same. Oh Everything gosh. was exactly the same. So we knew that if if one of us had a bad day, it was because of that. It was a bad day, you know, and not that not that you couldn't have. Usually, done. it came down to this. Yeah. On that day, not you know, skill wise, yeah, we're all, the yeah, same. It's always that, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's neat that y'all understood that and accepted it mm -hmm. at an early age, that it's your mind, it's not your physical, you know, a lot of people would just give up or, um, or just say, oh, you're better than me or whatever. But y'all knew at, a, at that age that you could just, that everything was equal playing field. Yeah, for well, sure. And then I, I think like Lenny said, the draw to biathlon was that it was so tough. And then I think one of the other draws for us was because as a nation, uh, we were definitely at the bottom. We were the underdogs. I mean, the Norwegians, the Russians, the Germans, they were all, you know, they grow up playing, playing, competing in biathlon. And that's, that's our thing. They have schools for kids, you know, elementary, middle school, that's what you do. You study on occasion but you do biathlon oh and so it was, it's just a it's a lifestyle for them and and to come into that we we wanted to kind of you know build up something if we could and uh, that challenge was something that drew us to it so you were in high school when you started trying that out yeah yeah what did your parents think uh, I think my dad liked it because biathlon its roots are hunting on skis and so he's like oh yeah that's you know that's kind of my thing <laughs> You know, he, he's not great on skis, but just <clears throat> hunting was his thing. So he was pretty into it. My mom's like, why would you want to do that? You're, you're good at soccer, you know? 
I can go watch you and, and then go to the beach as opposed to in biathlon, you know, frostbite. I'm going to get frostbite <laughs> if I go out and watch you, you know, so, um, but I mean, they, they were very supportive. They said, no matter what you do, just don't give up. If you're going to go for it, go for it. Don't just put your toes into it and then, you know, back out. And so, um, I think that was what, what their motivation was. Is like, if you're going to do it, then go all the way. Who got better faster? It's oh. a thing. Go, I don't, I don't give me, I don't care. Oh, no, I love you. I love you. I get that. I mean, I get all y'all's defenses. I, I want to, I want to hear that part because that's the trick, okay, right? So, <laughs> it's yeah, a, there is the drive. In the beginning, Tracy, <laughs> Tracy was a lot better than me. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Another yep. yeah in, the, in the beginning, she had a lot more success. Yeah. And then um, I got lucky on one race. And then after that, I, <laughs> I maybe it, had a teeny bit more. <laughs> it's, a, it's a trick, right? There's always, when, when Mojo would get good at something, I mean, he'd just take off with it. But I would get fascinated at how good he was at it. And then he, it was never a point to where he would talk down to me because I couldn't do it. He wanted me to get good at it so I could compete with him. Yeah. Right? And you kind of feed off each other. Yeah. But then there's always that twin thing because he would learn some cool trick that would, that, that would shift like from, from when you're good to you get real good. It's, you know what I'm talking about. There's a, with us, it's one thing. And when everyone's usually explaining their, how they get good at something, they give you the outline. Like, oh, I did this, worked hard. I got hate my breakfast, and just like they told you to. Yeah. But then there's that one thing where like, oh, that's all I needed to hear. Yeah. That's all you had to tell me. I get, And it's that body shift. You're like, oh, okay. Today's episode is brought to you guys by Athletic Greens. They have the most comprehensive daily nutritional drink I have ever tried. Here's the deal. There's a lot of stressors in life, and that makes it really hard to maintain effective nutritional habits. And that's why here the last few weeks, I've been doing some intermittent fasting. Basically, in the mornings, I don't eat anything until noon, which means I'm only consuming water up until noon, and I stop eating at 8 o'clock. This is where Athletic Greens has been able to help me. They have an all-in-one daily superfood powder that is by far one of the most easy and delicious habits that I've been able to bring into my routine. And that's because one tasty scoop of Athletic Greens contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, including a multivitamin, a multimineral, probiotic, a green superfood blend, and more that all work together to fill the nutritional gaps in my diet, increase energy and focus, aid with digestion, and they are helping support that healthy immune system that we all need without the need for taking multiple products, which means when I wake up and I get going for my day and I'm just drinking water, I can add that scoop of Athletic Greens to it It's been really easy. It's a great way to get those nutrients my body needs while I'm waiting to consume my first meal for the day. When I talked to the team over at Athletic Greens, they told me that they are obsessively always working to improve their holistic formula based on the latest research. They've produced over 53 iterations over the last decade, and that is continuing to count. They invest in the most absorbable and natural source of each ingredient, and they go above and beyond by doing third-party testing to ensure their customers continue to receive the highest quality best daily nutritional habit on the planet. So whether your lifestyle is keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, maybe you're intermittent fasting like me, every scoop contains less than one gram of sugar without compromising on taste. And right now, the team over at Athletic Greens is doubling down on supporting your immune system. They're doing that by offering you guys a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you guys have to do is visit our link. You'll basically never have to buy vitamin D again. So whether you're looking for peak performance or better health, covering your bases with Athletic Greens, making investing in your energy, immunity, and gut health each day simple, tasty, and efficient. All you guys need to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash TNQ. You can join health experts, athletes, health conscious go-getters all around the world who are making that daily commitment to their health every single day. All you guys need to do one more time is visit athleticgreens.com slash TNQ. Get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today. Make sure you guys support them because they support our show and we can't do it without them. And usually one picks it up before the other one, but it's a pull and and push deal. We're we're the same way. Yeah, and I think you, you guys probably saw a lot. You have your your biggest competition and your best friend competing with you every day, yeah. pushing you every day. So it, it makes a difference. I, I feel like you can get to a, a higher level doing that than as opposed to someone who you don't have such a close relationship with, you yeah. know, it, it it's. There were days I would call it at the end of the day, I'd call him up just to, and I mean, beat to death, just the worst day ever. 
Because when they separate us, you know, that's a vulnerability. <laughs> and he would be so fired up about me getting my ass whipped because that's what I went there for. I went first. I had to go through first. I, yeah. and, and I mean, I would tell him everything I would describe to him is what he read in the books and what we saw. And that's what fired us up to do it. Yeah. But when you're going through it, it's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he just, he constantly was like, oh, you're good. You're, you're so good. <laughs> just keep going. I'll be there beside you. You don't even know it, man. And I, that's what I needed to hear. Just that one, that one. It's kind of like your own voice talking to you. Yeah. Our own parents can't yeah. tell us apart over phone. You know what I mean? That when you hear that tone come yeah. through, you're just like, oh, that's well, uh, so all I need to hear. Just tell me to keep going. Just tell me to keep going, right? Because yeah. it's when you're looking at your mirror, it's like, hey, we're all we got. You know, what else is there? Yeah. Let's just keep going. It's, yeah. it's something. Yeah, a lot of people have that voice inside their head. Well, this this is that voice, <laughs> you know? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, as a twin, sometimes you have, your communication skills aren't as good because when you grow up, with someone all the time, you don't have to communicate like most normal people do because you already know what I'm thinking, what I want to say, things like that. So I, I don't necessarily have sentences. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that is so funny. So your first, like, when did you find out that you were making it to the Olympics? (sighs) It was, it was kind of a really challenging well, all three Olympics, making making the Olympic team was was a challenge. Biathlon's just, I don't know, it could be just downright miserable. But the first Olympic trials, you made it outright. Like you just, she had really good races. And for me, it came down to like just a couple seconds. <laughs> like I barely, I barely squeaked it out. And, and the Olympic trials are this process. They start out, you start out kind of the beginning of the year with this larger pool of people. And then it just gets whittled down and whittled down throughout the year. And then usually the last trials of the year is usually five people and there's four spots. (laughs) So, you know, it's one of those things and it's just this long drawn out, exhausting process over the whole year. And so, yeah, so our first Olympics, um, like Lani said, she barely made the team. Like, you know, what what does that mean? What does that mean? (laughs) She made it. But I know, that's my point. I was like, we talk, barely made the team. But there's other people that can take I get that part too, yeah. but then you gotta get that out of you. I mean, yeah. barely made the team. Well, it's like a girl on there. For us, <laughs> for us, a lot of times, like the difference between a medal can be, you know, being on the podium is, you know, fraction of a second, fraction of a second, or, you know, the width of a bullet. You know, if you miss a shot. Sure, life and death. I get that yeah, part. I was just yeah, being excited about crazy. being on the team. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so she made the team. Yeah, 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 like, <laughs> made it. Yeah, look, look, look at the whole big picture thing. I was like, He's I was always trying surprised. to remain on the positive. Oh, sure. So, you know how hard that is? They're making light of this. So it's three Olympics. It was kind of tough. But how old were you? I skipped over a big old. I'll be quiet. Well, no, 20, 23. 23. You're 23 yeah. for your first Olympics. Yeah. And how many people are competing in the U.S. to be on the team? Well, for the the invites in the initial start of the trials, a couple hundred, wow, they they invite them, and then it, it whittles down to like Tracy said, five for four spots. So, and the biggest players are always from where? Mountain towns. No, well, actually, <laughs> actually it's, from they're kind of out east. Yeah, there's yeah. not a lot of I mean, biathlon yeah. venues in the U.S. So no, we're talking about the Olympics. I'm talking about the world. Who, oh, who, 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 oh, yeah, the Russians. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Who, the who are the big, who do you have to go? The Norwegians. Okay. The Scand- Scandinavians in general. Yeah. I mean, they grow up cross country skiing to school and just to get around. Know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's what yeah. I thought. I was like, yeah. I know competing here, but overall, there, there are powerhouses. Around. Yeah. And even some of the top European biathletes will make 500,000 euro a year. Yeah. The top male is making over a million euro a year. Oh and just to do on, yeah. yeah, so when we go over there and compete, we'll have between thirty and 50,000 spectators at a World Cup. Mm-hmm. And more people watch a biathlon on a Tuesday than yeah. watch the Super Bowl here in the Isn't US. that crazy? Yeah. Oh How the I mean, they're crazy about it's it. It's unbelievable. The yeah. minute you step out of here, yeah. it's unbelievable when, when y'all go overseas. I, there's a couple of athletes that I know, Superbike champions too. It's, yeah. that stuff is, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was weird. It was biathlon trading cards, like baseball cards. All right, so y'all come over, over here to get away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we can we can walk down the streets over there without getting hounded by people for autographs and yeah. we come over here and people are like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Which is fine. You know? yeah. We can get our parents to show up to a race over here in the U.S. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's, that's, 
right? Right? Yeah. Like, hanging out with parents who want to do anything. It's, about, it's right? cold. Right. I ain't going oh, my <laughs> gosh. So the first Olympics you went to, where was that at? Uh, Torino, Italy. Italy. Yeah. Oh, no, that was fun. We actually were in those mountains. We went from... On our honeymoon. That's a terrible that we story. Won't talk about it. it was <laughs> <laughs> no. Horrible. Honeymoon. Oh yeah, our honeymoon was a disaster. It was. Um, but we just make a movie about it. We went from Switzerland to. We didn't even come home together. To Milan. <laughs> so we went through those mountains in northern Italy. It was beautiful territory. Really yeah. It was pretty. I love you. I love you. We didn't talk at all. Nice. I don't hear this story later. All you do is make it We've been married for ten years. It was horrible. Yeah. It was. Terrible. Okay. So, so yeah, our first Olympics, I mean, it's like anything your first time. What does that eyes, mean? No, it's eyes. not. That's not a thing. <laughs> you got to give me more than that. It's just like with anything. Well, anything like what? Like open the door, driving for the well, first time? Okay, so what Going to the your... Olympics has to be the most intense thing ever. Just like oh, your it first is. tour. It's the most, probably the most intense thing ever. Right? That's a great way of saying it. So, like, yes. Your, your eyes are this big. Train you know, for it. You got no idea what's going on yeah. until yeah. it's time to it's go. It's like right? when, when you go outside in the dark and all your senses are heightened and you're just like, yeah, oh over heightened. Gosh. Yeah, so we we screwed up. I think a little bit. You try too. We hard. did okay. You try too hard. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you bonk and then, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no recovery. That's a thing. Right. That should yeah. be so cool though to be representing your country. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the coolest things I think for us was opening ceremonies when you get a walk in behind the flag. Yeah, I mean that's the best feeling in the world. That's really all I. I like to watch from the Olympics is the opening <laughs> ceremony because I can just like I cry. The entire planet's that. watching it's, that. Yeah. yeah. The entire so planet's watching you guys to, go through that. To see how excited the um you know our competitors are and just see who's representing us and where they're from. It's just the neatest thing. What's so, the vibe? You can feel that too, right? Yeah. When you're oh, in yeah. there, it's something, yeah. huh? Yep. Yeah, you you walk in behind the, the flag, they announce, you know, United States of America and the whole stadium erupts in cheers of USA, oh. you know, and, and it just, oh man, it, it just, there's so much adrenaline rush, you know, it, I think more walking in behind the flag than actual competing. Oh. Yeah. You know? So that was, I was going to ask you that. Is that, is, can that, is that something like when you, when people are like, Hey, why do you keep going back to the Olympics? So I can walk into that, that first part, <laughs> oh, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Or, yeah, the, or, the, or the closing ceremonies, I bet. And to win. No, there's that. I would I mean, think that because they're very, I mean, it's so, so competitive. I would think that your eye is on a medal. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, always and is. then you always want to, I mean, you always want to compete with biathlon. I, it's there with, especially with the two different sports, trying to combine both of them. Rarely does everything get combined to where it's, it's perfect. But man, when it, when you combine it, it is the best feeling in the world. It makes all those days of training and all those times you fell on your face absolutely worth it that's so cool so yeah so we did the torino olympics and and then just you know got the taste of it you know when you get a taste of something you want more yeah and so trained hard for another four years and then started that whole long process of the trials again you know big pool whittle down whittle down whittle down so you're here when you're doing that or you where do y'all start out here in the u.s in the summer we're on roller skis okay that's what i thought Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. But is, is it harder? Is that harder? No. Well, if, if you want to stop, yes, because yeah. there's no brakes. <laughs> and are you on concrete? Yeah, yeah asphalt, yeah. usually. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So ra- railroad railroad tracks and stop signs are not your friend when you have those things strapped to your feet. Oh. Yeah, that's just for training. When when we do the competition, right, like, like a closed course. Yeah. Oh my! Gosh, right, that's crazy. but y'all have those. There's skis that you can go up the mountain with when there's no snow, right? It has those the, the it's like roller blades for the, the yeah. mountain. Yeah. Y'all train how many years out of you just constantly? Yeah, we get two weeks off in the spring, and then um, it was two workouts a day every day the rest of the year, unless we were competing. So oh just split that down skiing to your abilities behind the rifle. We usually combined it. There, there were times where we'd just work on our shooting skills and it was just shooting no heart rate or anything like that. But a lot of times we combine some sort of physical training with the shooting. I'm going to take it down rabbit holes. Do you, so do you, when, when you get to the, to the line, do you slow your heart rate down or do you 
do you pull your breathing to your heart rate to maintain an equilibrium to where you can shoot down that barrel without it moving up and down? We try to shoot with as high a heart rate as possible. You go up. Yep. That's what I thought. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you got to, right? Yep. You have, you have yeah, less, yeah. the higher your heart rate, the less barrel movement. Right. I mean, not, uh, not obviously compared to being at rest, but you know, if you think of the, the EKG, the space between the beats, the, 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 bigger the gap between the beats, the more barrel movement you're going to have. Correct. If it has nothing if, to do with your heartbeat. It's your yeah. lung movement. Yeah. It's the barrel moving up and down. Yeah. So that, that it's, to, it's to, to breathe through that part, right? Yeah. Walk us through biathlon competition. So for the people that don't know, and, you know, we're talking shooting, shooting and skiing. So you are, how does this competition look? Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's a lot like, um, it's sniper school on ski. I'll exactly. Say exactly what it is. But you're going <laughs> uphill. Up That's and the down worst hills. part. Yeah. I mean, it's so literally y'all are the most effective snipers. Women are the most. Well, they are. No, hands for down. Sure. <laughs> First of all, in the sniper community, I'm, I know I'm talking about. We studied this. That they would say that y'all are the most lethal thing we have down here if you train properly. Y'all actually are because of your ability to do that. I don't have that ability for whatever reason. That that's war test. That, that kind of thing. So when y'all get good at this, terrifying. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like really scary if y'all have the ability to do both those things. Seriously, because it's the hardest cross doing on the skis and the snow in that environment, period, yeah. because of the temperature uh, uh, outside and inside, right? Yeah. On, on top of doing the hardest thing, which is shooting a rifle at something. But is there a marker that you're skiing to to shoot at or like a target? Yeah. So imagine, imagine this, there's a big stadium, a gigantic stadium, and there's, you know, 30, 50,000 people in front of them is a start finish area. And then the shooting range. Mm -hmm. So they get it, they get to watch, um, start finish. There's big, uh, jumbotron screens and stuff like that. So you can, they, they have the whole course filmed. Um, so what you do is you start, you ski a loop, come back into the range, come back into the shooting range, you know, ski the same loop, um, just so it's spectator friendly. Cause there's, Usually, a lot of the courses there's three to five people deep all the way around the course, just screaming their their heads oh off. Yeah. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Literati Kids. They've got the greatest children's books, which are going to open up whole new worlds for discovery. With Literati Kids, your child can explore uncharted places every month with spellbinding stories hand picked by experts. I know that Addy and Axe got some of the books and they absolutely love them. Literati Kids is a try before you buy subscription book club, which means each month Literati delivers five vibrantly illustrated children's book, bringing the immersive magic of reading right to your home. The great thing is Literati's book club is age-based, meaning you're going to get the appropriate reads for your bookworm, whether they're snuggling with you for story time, or maybe they're letting their imagination roam free. Each book bundle is thoughtfully tailored by education experts with five stories meant to spark new interests and nurture a healthy curiosity. No more sorting through hundreds of titles, trying to guess what your child will cherish. Literati sends you the best in children's literature. You can choose to purchase the ones you love and the ones you don't, you can send them right back. That doesn't cost you a thing. From art and adventure to tales of compassion, each Literati box follows a new enriching theme with personalized extras like stickers, surprises, and special guest artwork. Every box is a fun and fresh adventure. Your kids are going to love it. Head over to literati.com slash T and Q. You're going to get 25% off your first two orders. Select your child's book club and start them on a literary journey like no other. Literati.com slash T and Q. Only place to find 25% off your first two orders of this one-of-a-kind book subscription. The most joyful way to foster a lifelong love of learning. That's L-I-T-E-R-A-T-I dot com slash T and Q. Check them out, guys. So I watch it every time. I'm oh, sorry. I get excited, man. I, I know. I, but I, I, I want. I really I love this. You when know. when you're skiing on the course in some of these stadiums, you can't you can't feel yourself breathing. These people are just screaming so loud. You're going up a hill, and it's just it's it's loud. It's intense. Yeah. Usually, when you come in to shoot, that whole crowd is just you know thirty thousand. Yeah, you probably just, can't even hear the, when you hit. Right. No, <laughs> That's right. Hard, I mean, that, no. that, think about that. It's screaming so loud that it takes away your. What did I get? <laughs> and that's what makes the sport so fun is is when you hit, they erupt like cheering, and then when you miss, they boo. Oh God! <laughs> so it puts a lot of pressure on it, right? And you have five shots, so so in between each each shot, they either cheer or they boo, and then there's a penalty loop just right outside um, the shooting range. So if you miss any shot, 
you have to go ski that penalty loop and they will boom you, you know about it, right? all the way around <laughs> that penalty loop. And it's, uh, um, you're shooting a rifle. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a, you're skiing on cross country skis and they're, they're really thin compared to downhill skis. You're, there's no metal edges. It's just, just plastic. Your heel's not hooked in. So they're, they're very unstable. <laughs> so downhills and stuff, you have to be on your toes all the time. Cause you know, you fall on that, you're going to break your rifle and things like that. It's the hardest physical sport there is, right? And that, yeah, they, it, has, they say, it has to be because of the environment. They say you, you burn more calories um, in biathlon than any other sport in the world because it's in the cold, you're, you're going up and down hills and you're using your arms and your leg, every muscle pretty much in your that body. So to cool. Hand eye coordination with the, the just that, because they make us run down, up and down yard lines and do the craziest stuff. Just, just so we can lay down and learn how to shoot breathing like that. And have they put you on skis? No, but I'm not an Olympian. <laughs> I just want you to know that. First of all, I was a Navy SEAL and I had to go through that and I was nowhere near qualified to what y'all are. Yeah, talking but you about. guys are the Olympians of the military. So. I get it. That's so my compliment I'm trying to give you. Because <laughs> we got other stuff to do. But well, that's I just think that would be a, a neat training be, thing just to. Do you? Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the <laughs> tough amount of Make it more sure. miserable than it really is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the thing. girl's got an idea. Got an idea. If y'all come train us, <laughs> well, then we'll do it. On there we the go. Sand. You can do well, it. They, no, there's there's some guys that that ski on. We've done that before in Colorado. Mm-hmm. There's the Great Sand Dunes, yeah. and we'll go over there and ski. And oh, some people gosh. do it in Hawaii. They'll ski right along the surf and, and the beach. And, oh wow! And some, some of the desert dunes, you could probably have idea. a blast out there. Oh yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Okay, so second second time you're going through. Which where was that at? So these, the second Olympics, we're going to be in Vancouver, Canada. Okay. So yeah, so we go through the whole trials process. Um, we were favorites, I think, to make the team. Um, we are kind of found ourselves in a switch role from the, the trials before. So Lanny's having good races. My first race, I totally bombed. It was awful. Um, but I wasn't too worried because the, the next two races were races that really, there were a lot of shooting in it and that favorite that was favorite that was your thing that yeah. was my strengths shooting was my strength so um I wasn't worried uh second race went really well third race we woke up the day of the race and you couldn't see past here I mean there was so much fog um and they ended up canceling the race what yeah so the I fog? never fog yeah well you couldn't see the target so um, so normally they reschedule the race and it's not that big a deal. You just do it the next day or whatever. Well, for whatever reason, they didn't reschedule it and oh, they named the team based off of those first two races. So I had a bad race and a good race and, uh, yeah, just wasn't ended up enough. being alternative, the alternate, know, of alternate the Olympic team of the Olympic team that year, which was kind of a tough pill to swallow. Um, mostly because I just never got that chance, yeah. you know, and it was something that it was, you know, something out of my control. You I, I, yeah, I was about to say, you can't put that on you at all. If that oh, happened like that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But still, it still sucks. It's, yeah. Yeah. When you train hard for four years or longer than that, um, and then you just don't, don't even get that chance. You know, that was, that was tough. So, but regardless, I went and was able to watch her and she had to that point, the best u.s finish and when i when we were talking earlier about that you know podium being that far away she missed her was it your last shot very last shot out of 20 targets by that much and that would have put her in in the podium so but it made us hungry right? oh yeah it was good great so, motivation because you know you realize you were that close yeah and it's it's possible to, especially to you know an American coming in and trying and knocking on that door with all those Europeans that are and Russians and Germans and Norwegians that are so good at this sport. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so that's the best part about y'all. Yeah. It's like, Hey, if we're going to come up and knock on the door and then you don't let us in. Then we'll come in, we'll kick the door in and then you throw <laughs> us out. But when we come back in, it's, it's on now. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, it's almost the best way to earn it. Yeah. Did you become friends with the people that you were competing against? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it was interesting because we, as Americans, we were always, most of our competitions were in Europe. Mm-hmm. And that Christmas break, it was a week long. But if you travel home and then back over, it just wasn't enough time. And so usually we'd be stuck in 
in Europe for Christmas and the Japanese team and, and some of the other teams that had a lot of travel, they'd be stuck there too. And so we, we got to become really good friends with the Japanese team for one. And when we first met them, they didn't speak Japanese and we didn't speak English. And so there's a lot of bowing and just, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And we exchanged Gift gifts exchange. and over, the, over time we started learning how to speak Japanese and they started learning how to speak oh, English funny. and just became really good friends. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Sport, right? Yeah. Brings nations together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we would actually, speaking of that, we would travel a lot with a soccer ball and bring it out in an airport and start juggling it. And you would just see like all of these people Can't come it. from all over. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. And I mean, you would, no one would say, it. I mean, you wouldn't, they're speaking all different languages or whatever, but just start. Yeah. Sport just has a, has its own language. Yeah. You don't so have to talk. Were there Everyone any knows other what it twins? is. What's that? Were there any other twins? Yeah. Yeah, there were um, uh, Italian. Yep. Uh, Slovenia. Slovenia or Slovakia? I think Slovenia. Yeah. 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 All right. So there's one more, right? Yeah. So there's one more. So, yeah, pretty hungry after that last one and kind of like, yeah, we it's it's within grasp if we if we do this right. So. Trained another four years after that, started the long, you know, trials process, whittled down to five women trying out for four spots. And uh, again, heavy favorites to make the team. (laughs) And so start out the trials and I'm killing it. I had some of the best races that I've ever had. And uh, she gets sick, like right, right before the trial trial started. Yeah, you can't compete at that level and be sick and um so she tried to attempted to race the first race and just kind of buried herself and, um, like the flu or yeah some some sort of nasty bug that i picked up overseas yeah. 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 yeah so yeah so she i don't did you race you didn't race no the i didn't last two races. no i after the first race i was pretty much stuck in bed and um, yeah so she didn't race and um so yeah i went on and had probably some of the best races of my career made the team super safe, but all during it, you know, I'm watching her sick, not able to race. And I'm thinking to myself, well, four years ago, I was in that position, not sick, but I know what it feels like yeah, to be thing, like right? that close. Um, you know, a little bad luck on her part, getting sick and not being able to have that chance. So I decided, you know, there's something I could do about it. And they announced the team. I turn around to the coach and I'm like, I declined my spot on the Olympic team, ah. knowing that, that, um, that they would name the next in line. So, that is so awesome. She gave up her spot for a sleeper. <laughs> I got to come up with something cool to do now. My <laughs> <brother's nothing. laughs> That's like giving a kidney and stuff right there, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That is so cool. Would, would you do something like that for your brother? Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. If I knew that, be, if, 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 we're, we're smart like that. I was going to ask you those kind of questions after you got done telling us about, but y'all, you, absolutely. Yeah. You just kind of know. Yeah. Like there, there, there's a feeling I get sometimes. I'm like, I don't know if I'm the right one for this job. Right. Or if, if we talked about this earlier, there's something about a tweet. You can't explain it. You're just like, I know you're the one who's supposed to do this, not me. Yeah. <laughs> and vice versa. It's your time or not. Yeah. It's, it's on those races. Sometimes we get sick. Or sometimes that it's, it's a, can't explain it. It's Did weird. your coach have a hard time accepting that? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, a lot of people are like, well, why would you do that? You know, you're, you're having, I was having some of the best races of my career. Um, and you know, who knows what would happen? I, I don't, I, you know, I don't think I would have meddled, but you never know. Um, but yeah, it was the easiest decision I've ever made. It just wasn't, wasn't, it was a yeah, people, people kept asking us or saying, you know, that's amazing that you did that, but I don't know if I could give up my dream for someone else. And for that's, Tracy, that, that was our dream. I was going to say, that's the same yeah. thing you said. I appreciate yeah. you saying that, but it wasn't your dream. <laughs> What we're talking about, of course, you can't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> how, how could you? Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you feel when she did that? I she said no. I said no. I'm <laughs> like, you're, it's because she missed out on that opportunity in, in Vancouver. I'm like, no, this is your time. You know, that you earned this one. 
you have to go. And uh, she's like, no, you, cause up until I got sick, I had been having the year of my life too. And, and uh, she's like, no, you're, you're the one that's supposed to go. I train with her every day. I know what she's capable of. You know? <laughs> that is so sweet. Yeah. I love that. Well, the same way. So you, you have a strength that she doesn't have vice versa. I with, with my brother and, and our, and our buddies that I grew up with, I was like, that's why we keep them around because he possesses a strength that I do not have. And when we're together, they, they feed off each other. Yep. And it, it, it kind of switches. So we don't really have a leader in our group, but whenever something come, pops up in front of it, whoever's proficient at it, you get your butt in there and do it, right? Absolutely. And then the rest of us back you up like can't believe. Because yeah. we do, we are proficient in, in it. Yeah. yeah. Right? And, but what, each time when that circle rolls around, it just, it's, a, it's a weirdest feeling. There's been a couple of times we've gotten that as well. And um, when you get dropped into it, it's the no factor. Like, hell no, 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 no. I watched you go through all this to get that. Like, just remember, just the guy, like I had to get everything out of the way. So you uh, slingshot in there and do what we needed to do. It's kind of one team, one fight. Yeah, absolutely. I was trying to explain that to my boss the other day, actually, about how, um, like for me, I, I, it's it sounds funny when you when you say it out loud. Like when I tell someone separately, I'm only half as good as I am together. You know, when, when we, when we combine our forces, it's, it's that much better. Um, you know, by myself, yeah, I, I can put in my best effort and I'm going to, you know, do as good as I can, but together we can, we can make amazing things happen. Unstoppable so force. Awesome. Unstoppable, <laughs> unstoppable force, you know, and, and it's hard for people to understand that, you know, that together we're the perfect person, but separated, you know, I'm only half a brain, half a heart, <laughs> you know, uh, things like unstoppable that. Unstoppable force, a movable object. Yeah. You know, when, you, when they go against each other, that's okay, right? But when, you're, when they're moving together, nothing can stop. Our, yeah. My brother and I is from the womb to the tomb. We came in here together, we're going to leave together, guaranteed. Yeah. Nothing gets in our way. Yeah. That's why I separate us a lot of times. Yeah. Just so we'll learn. And when you come back in stronger each time. Yeah. So did you become her coach? No. 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 I, I became her, probably one of the only American fans in Sochi. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, there was, um, I don't know if you guys paid attention at all, but there was a white, they called it the white widow. And uh, it was, um, I think a lady from Georgia or Crimea or something like that, that was threatened, threatening the Russian Olympics. She wanted to go in there and blow it up. And she, she got into Russia and they couldn't find her. And so they were worried that something was going to happen. So uh, the U S Olympic committee basically said, you know, keep your family at home. There's, there's a threat. Um, If, if you don't want to go, we understand. But you know, it's Olympics. <laughs> I'm right. gonna, not going to not go or whatever. So we uh, like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going. And and Ch- Tracy was one of the few Americans that, at least for the Bathlon side, that that went and, and supported us. Let's take a second to thank our friends over at Fabletics Men. Their mission is to represent every guy out there who wants to look and feel their best without breaking the bank. They keep it simple. They cut the crap. They focus on what counts and they do the things better than anyone else. That means Lululemon quality for half the price because they know guys deserve nothing less than the best gear on the market. I'm actually rocking some of their shorts right now. They're stupid comfortable. The material is fantastic. I love using them to run, love using them to just hang around during the day. They're incredible. If you guys want to check them out, you should. Now, Fabletics also makes the ladies gear, so ladies, don't be afraid. They got them. Check them out, too. The ladies have been super upset with me because I got a pack of Fabletics gear, and they didn't. It's all good, guys. Go over to fabletics.com slash TNQ because this one is for you. Access our insane deal. Get your first two pairs of shorts for just $24 when you become a Fabletics Men VIP member at checkout. All styles, all colors, no exclusion. It's an insane deal because they know that once you try their gear, you'll be hooked. I was skeptical at first, but when I got these shorts and I tried them on, I'm a believer. I believe in them. They're amazing. They feel great. The quality's great. And if you guys are on the fence about becoming a Fabletics Men VIP member, let me kind of walk you through it. You're going to get the best active wear at the best prices. You're going to get at least 20 to 50% off the retail prices every time you shop. You're going to get free shipping on all orders over $49, free returns and exchanges within 45 days, and you can get access to even more savings with their member credits. Each month, VIP members can choose to be billed 
$49.95 for a member credit. Members can use that credit toward any item or kit up to $80. You heard that right. You're going to get billed $49.95 for a credit you can use on something that costs $80. It's free money, all right? Credit expires after 12 months, which means you have plenty of time to use it. Or you could choose to skip the month and pay nothing. There is no limit to how many times you could skip. One more time, guys, head over to fabletics.com slash TNQ. You're going to get access to this insane deal. One more time, you're going to get your first two pairs of shorts for just $24 when you become a Fabletics Men VIP member at checkout. You guys should definitely check them out. I remember the Russian Olympics didn't have had some issues with like, some of the Russians that weren't doing well, like ended up really sick or did somebody end up missing or something. And well, cause there was kind of a rumor, not on the news or anything, but I guess through social media that, um, that like the um, higher ups in Russia were taking out their own if they didn't uh, meddle. It, it's, it's hard with, with Russia. You just, they have a completely different culture and, and things like that. They had the previous been Olympics banned they'd... from the last Olympics yeah. for um, not being up to standards with their doping. Oh, that's um, right. Yeah, that's their right. anti-doping. Um, yeah, I mean, within the, the country, the things we we saw that you know Russia and other countries were willing to do to to win at all costs. I mean. I, I'm the same way. I'll I'll do it all, win at all costs, but I'm not going to cheat to do it. Yeah, you know. But the things we saw from, you know, people trying to cheat doping tests to, uh, there were even um, athletes being impregnated by their coaches and then aborting it so that they could get the hormone uh, boosts from oh my gosh, the early stages of pregnancy. Oh my god. And just just things like that. There, it's it's Absurd. unbelievable what? what people are are <laughs> willing to do to to win in, in other countries. Yeah. So well, one of the one of the Russian athletes was caught for doping in Torino Olympics and uh, sent home, uh, stripped her of her medal, sent her home, and she was welcomed as a hero. Oh, really? So you know, I mean, different cultures. Yeah. Completely different. I mean, that's one thing y'all get to see, right? You're ambassadors to the country. It, mm -hmm. it, does it make you appreciate America more when you leave it, when you come back, is when you get to see everybody else and how that we live in the best country in the world. We do, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it 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 breaks my heart seeing people, you know, burn the flag or or kneel or things like that because I, th I think a lot of those people have never gone overseas to true experience what it's like in other countries and see to see how amazing we have it back here in the United States and the freedoms that we have and things like that. Every time I come well, we're back. We're perfect, but we're, yeah, we're doing okay. No, yeah, absolutely. That's how you, the, the perfect picture is the entire United States. It's all of us together. In, yeah. Imperfection is all through that. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. I, I, I heard somebody saying, you know, America is not exceptional. Whoever's saying that means they're not because America is a people. And it's wherever we live. So if someone's feeding you that line, it's like, well, coming straight from the person who's saying it, most everybody else is exceptional. And that's always how I try to look at it. If you get a chance to go over and, and wear our flag in any capacity, because what you, y'all take it all the way to the line after when y'all stop competing and it's not fun anymore, then that's when war is. <laughs> plain and simple. Yep. I mean, if it went down and they turned, if something ever happened and somebody came out at us, y'all don't think, where do you think you, you two would be? I'd That's exactly right. Sniper, right SEAL in. team, I rub side. Yep. Kill them skis. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> it, it's that. It's kind of like that. Y'all are a perfect example of how far we and exceptional our, our people are. And that heart and that that sport, hardest one. So you're in Sochi. Your sister's not competing with you. Walk us through that experience. Yeah. So Sochi was probably one of the toughest toughest experiences in my life because when I when I got to the Olympics um it, it was kind of an unfortunate situation uh because of I don't know if it was you giving up your spot or what but um they didn't want to race me so I spent the, the entire Olympics just trying to to battle for that opportunity to race and, and you know that what was really cool about what she did is, is it inspired the entire world. Like everybody's like, wow, that's amazing that you, you do that. And, 
And uh, when, when you have that opportunity to inspire people to, you know, do the right thing or help someone out, you know, you really got to take advantage of that. And um, so, yeah, it was one of those situations where it, it there's a lot of pressure, a lot of um, a lot of politics and things like that. But uh, I, I finally got the opportunity to race. They gave me one one race to do it. And it I'll, I'll sum it up. It, the, the whole race kind of was it sums up our entire career we push too hard. The Team Never Quit podcast brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. You guys know them, you love them because they help us put this show on every single week. Listen here, if you're an active duty service member, veteran, DOD civilian, or even a military family member, you can join Navy Federal. That means if you've served in any branch of the military, doesn't have to just be the Navy, could be Army, Marine Corps, Air Force, Coast Guard, you can join Navy Federal Credit Union. On average, Navy Federal members earn and save $361 more per year. That's the dollar value of Navy Federal's 2019 member give back study. You could pay no fees, get low rates and rate discounts, plus earn cash back and grow your savings. Navy Federal puts members first by helping them save money, make money, enjoy peace of mind and security through personalized around the clock service. Plus now is a great time to join. Maybe you've got a large credit card balance after the holidays. Don't worry about it. Navy Federal Credit Union can help you rebalance your priorities. Make a plan to do away with that high interest credit card debt by transferring your balance to a Navy Federal credit card. With a low intro APR and no balance transfer fees, you could pick the right card to help you take back control. 5.99 to 18% variable APRs based on the product type and credit worthiness up to a dollar cash advance transaction fee at non-Navy Federal ATMs. Visit NavyFederal.org. Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. Make sure to go support them. And I, I went out and I, I wanted to win that thing so bad that I <laughs> bonked so hard. But but the thing that I learned the most about that race is that I didn't quit. Because I, I remember there's it was one of the most miserable courses that we ever had to ski. It was straight up and straight down and and really hard. And I was skiing around and and there were girls quitting, quitting left, and right. left and right and just, you know, giving up and things like that. And, and throughout the race, um, the harder I pushed, the, the worse I was getting, you know, I was just, my tank was on empty. I just ran out of gas and, um, I started falling back down, down the ranks and, and I see all these people, you know, quitting and things like that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to quit no matter what, even if, even if I finish dead last, I'm going to give my absolute hardest, best effort on this day for Tracy and for our country. And so I did. I made it to the finish line and collapsed to the finish line. And, and you know, it wasn't the worst result ever, but it wasn't, wasn't a medal. But the, the biggest takeaway I had from that is that I didn't quit. Yeah. So. Oh, that's so awesome. That's kind of, that's what you have to go through to get here. I <laughs> mean, just laid on the line. I had my ass whipped so bad they made a movie out of it too. <laughs> All right, so I mean, at least you know when you show up, yeah. and it's I mean when when it, when we come in pairs, it's it's tough. Yeah. You can bet more people learn something from that than they did from anything else. Just yeah. because you, I mean, because you can't look at. I, I, I get that part of, of of the race getting in there, but when doing that. Is the is the pass or fail? Yep. Just getting through that part to take that pressure. The the, the beautiful part about it is like, oh, it's so noble you pass that down. That was hell. <laughs> I mean, you got <laughs> yeah. passed down hell, yep. right? To step <laughs> into it, you could not do it. I mean, it was a blessing and a curse. That's how those work. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Period. Yep. Yeah, there was. I, I, remember, <laughs> I mean, that's that's the love that comes. I was like, hey man, I got my ass just ripped for you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. I, I remember, um, skiing around this one nasty corner and I'm coming around the corner that one of the Japanese girls had flown off the course and was being, um, uh, carted off on a, on a stretcher. And, and I was just thinking to myself how easy it could be for me to just launch myself off. And that'd be my out. Like, <laughs> you know, my excuse, like, Oh, well I have an excuse for not doing well. Broke Cause I just launched myself off the course, broke a ski or something like that. And I'm like, no, I'm, Whatever happens, I'm going to own it. I'm going to finish. I'm going to 
put myself through this this miserable hell that I'm that I'm going through right now, and I'm gonna get to the finish and and uh, you know. Well, for the record, if it makes you feel any better, I actually threw myself off the mountain to get it over with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good on you for sticking it out. But to, in that capacity, it's it, that's I, I know that sting, especially with us when we come back. That's why I had to go back. You got to go back, right? Yeah. yeah. Then you can whip me if you want, but I'll keep coming back. Yeah. Up until the point to where you won't have to deal with me anymore, or this won't be a thing, right? And those are the greatest stories. Because if everybody's like, oh, I wanted to do this, I trained, I got gold. There's, there's no in-between. You don't have any of those moments where yeah. it was just like they took everything away from you. Oh, yeah, we got some of them, all right. Like you can't, like, can't believe. And that's what makes you different. Yeah. So out of all of that, I mean, that had to just be so mentally exhausting. Physical, of course, but just that had to just wear you down. <sighs> And then you continue to compete in shooting sports. So the competition never died with all of that exhaustion. How do you, what drove you to continue to compete? Just always wanting to be better, you know. Yeah. And so now y'all do three gun, right? Three gun competitions, which is awesome. Can we, is there any way we can like plug in some of their video of them doing these um yeah. competitions they're just so badass apparently y'all have the best time at the ranch like i hear about the she never quitting all that when y'all are all together doing that stuff uh-huh. how much fun y'all have we're not allowed yeah. I don't know, most people don't know that Guys, not, well, it's a, a woman's event <laughs> yeah so. it does say she yeah, ladies, no, I know. Ladies, <laughs> like, well that's not fair Guys, <laughs> yeah, they they best time. They make i'm sure they would love you there but it's no it's a thing i get it though. no it's it's fine but uh, okay, i like the plane every now and again well yeah and the best thing about three gun is it's more shooting and less running so you're pulling the trigger a lot more yeah not going nearly as far but yeah it's it's fun it just it tests your shooting on so many different levels and coming from our background. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun when you do have those harder three gun stages, you're like, so do one of you like to run more than the other? Who likes to ski? Who doesn't? Oh, we both like to ski. We both like to run. Both of you like to run. We like, we like, that's a real thing. I hate running. My brother runs 110 mile races for fun. Like I literally will not do it. I'd rather fall. (laughs) <laughs> and that kind of thing. I, just I, have them drag you. Yeah, I love swimming. You put me in the water, different story altogether. I mean, there are some differences. Do y'all have any of those? She likes red vines. I don't. What's that? Candy. So, candy. That red plastic. That's the only wash. difference? Oh, pretty like much. Twizzlers? Yeah. yeah. Twizzlers. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Red vines. Um, I don't want to go down that route with me because I. We have no, no joy in here. I, We'd have been like, I know there is a difference. I told you, they're so similar. Where you and I Morgan get the, have a lot of similarities, there's also a lot of differences about them. They. I appreciate you telling me this. I know exactly <laughs> what I'm looking at, so I know that they're there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there probably are. I think our biggest differences are personality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other than that, we love to do to do the exact same things. Yeah. And y'all live close to each other? We do, yeah. Yeah. There's there's certain things like she's better at math. I'm better at science. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, that, yeah. that keeps going. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. just as, that I know those two things exist, then yeah, I'm done. Oh, there's I'm sure there's other things. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we don't ever talk about them either. But I, <laughs> I, and the other funny. one doesn't. That's funny. Or... We both like to cook. <laughs> what's what's uh some of the biggest differences between us well i i have the brains and the looks and i don't know what got. <laughs> <laughs> same kind of shampoo same kind of toothpaste <laughs> same clothes or off, off color opposite color usually the same color same color yeah we and Mojo and I are, are different sizes now, so that's, that only comes into play. But then there are a time of year when we're both the same size. And then we'll, I'll have a lot of stuff over here, but we'll just keep it at his house. But Morgan ask, loves saying that he's skinnier. Yeah, you know what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he does. How, how much you weigh? He's like, about 205 pounds. Like, oh, whatever, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> God, I'm not, because I'm, I'm the baby. But it's, um, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's, it's, She's an inch taller. 
Yeah, so, I'm too. Yeah. 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 That umbilical cord. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yes. You created all that help for me. Me. <laughs> like, you pressured me in the womb and in life. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so funny. Uh, well, I love it. I love y'all's story. Is there anything else y'all want to share about your, your story? She got married, but and your husbands are not twins, right? No, no, no. Are they buddies? They, they get along, but they don't do a lot of stuff together. Yeah, so. Are they alike? No. no. So there, there it is right there. Yeah. yeah. So what? That's it right there. So they're different? <laughs> yeah. Told you. <ya>. Yeah. <laughs> Told you. <ya. laughs> so what did you go for in a man and what did you go for? I, I married someone very similar to my dad. Mm-hmm. And you? She would say I married someone very similar to my mom. Oh, really? <laughs> <go> right <laughs> just, just personality wise. Like, and what's funny about my husband is he actually grew up half an hour from my, where my dad did. So they, they have that same kind of twisted sense of Michigan humor, oh. which I think is funny. But. So growing up, did one, did one of you run around with, like ride with dad and was gonna have daddy's little girl and then the other one hang out, hung out with mom or was it? No, because we were, because um, there's three of us. So my older sister would hang out with our mom and then Teresa and I'd hang out with my dad a lot more. So he taught them to be like hunting outdoors. Awesome. He didn't, he didn't have any boys. So he wanted to share, you know, that. And y'all were supposed to be the boy. <laughs> we were. <laughs> one day we filled that spot. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter, my LA, she is my, she rolls around with me. I love taking her everywhere. It's yeah. the best because I know when they get older, she won't want to, oh, you know, understandably, I'm trying to get all that in there, but I teach her to hunt. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. They turn out to be Olympians. <laughs> what do you, yeah, I know, right here. I daddy's girl through and through. Daddy's girl. So, yeah, I ask plenty of questions about how to raise, the, raise my daughter. And what, y'all have kids? I do. She is too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they they call me second mommy. Oh, yeah. I love that. We have another friend that's twins, Hannah, doing that, and they do that. It's second, their kids, and then actually one of them named her daughter after her sister. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's so cute. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> well, I, have I guess I do kids. have a weird name. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. I love that. Well, thank y'all so much for sharing your story and. We can't wait to um, put, I want to put all the video together, just snippets from different things. I saw. I have so many questions. I'm sorry. Go ahead. There's a um, video of, I think it's you, Lanny, um, on a barrel, running on a barrel and shooting at the same time, at the same time and like hitting every single target. Yeah. Sounds easy. It is not easy. <laughs> it's, it's actually, no, I was telling someone this the other day. <laughs> no, it sounds possible. I'm it's kidding. it's easier than you think it is. Uh, for a lot of people, so I do a lot of crazy stuff like yeah. that, but like I'll unicycle and shoot, I'll hop on barrels, you know, a lot of different stuff like that. But it it all comes down to just training the brain to focus on one thing and the other thing being muscle memory. And that's all. that's all it is. Yeah. So, so is that how you, when you describe like the never quit mentality to people, is that what you would say? Just train the brain? Train the brain. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. A lot of people say so, so shooting. We'll just take just shooting, for example. Everybody says, oh, it's 90% mental. And how often do people actually train the mental side of shooting? Never. They go to the range. We put a ton of rounds down range pull and the trigger, that, pull the trigger a bunch. But they don't think about how their mind is processing it or, or, or is when, when we were training for a biathlon. So when, when you come into the end of the range, you not only have all those people screaming behind you, um, and can't, can't think with that many people and they're either booing you, you know, or cheering if you hit that you're, you're also, you, you've got your competitors right next to you shooting. So you know how they're shooting. So there's that pressure. And then you've got, blizzard light conditions half the time so wind and you know sleet and whatever um so when when we trained for biathlon we trained the mental side of all the time we're constantly putting something on training or constantly trying to distract each other so that when when we get into that competition we're able to flip that switch and be able to get get the job done that is so awesome i cannot train my brain that's yes you can yes you can i say train the brain the body has to do that 
for you because it's mind, body, and spirit. You can put all those together when you get that cohesive shot. And it only happens at a young age through, through that's when it's like, how do you train the brain? You always start beating your body up because that's the only way you're going to learn it. And that muscle memory up into the point to where it's the hand-eye coordination, it's literally wherever this is looking and your finger points, it's just an extension. Yeah. You're just reaching out and poking somebody. And whenever your eye looks at it, those, those, those shots that y'all do, it, it truly is that. He always says that. And it's so hard for me when I start thinking about that and I'm shooting, I mess up. Cause there's no thought into it. It's like with anything else, when I know to reach down to get a button or I know however you do everything else with us, they, they wear us out. They beat us to death. That's skiing. I mean, they, they, they literally for days before they put an empty weapon in our hands. So we understand what that feels like. And then a million times you'll pull that thing and then they'll put a magazine in it with no rounds in it. And then one by one. So you'll know, so what happens is you literally train your muscles to, that's a part of you. It's like your arm holding it up. Yeah. Anything else. Yeah. The less you do, the more times you do that, it just becomes a thing. And that booing and all that, that's, that's audio programming. You put that in your head to where it becomes music. Like when they're booing you and screaming at you, that's your rhythm. Mm -hmm. that we, that's what they do to us. Yeah. yeah. So when people wear us out and start screaming at us is right when I start coming. That's when we activate. Yeah. And we can't do it until they do that. Yeah. It's kind of like when you're chewing, you're, when they ask us, like, how come you can't? I was like, I have to be triggered. Yeah. Like, I got to be pushed into a moment to when it activates I don't, and I, it's undeniable. Yeah. Yeah. And that comes through all that pain. Yeah. It's, you're, it's you're funny. In, you're in the zone. You, you were able to flip that switch and you're, you're in the zone. But we, we shoot better under pressure and with a high heart rate than we do just like if we're just uh, blinking so out at the that's, range, that's you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, Did y'all ever think about going to the military? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we, we wanted to, did. but our, our, <laughs> our, our mom, her side of the family was, was in the military. Um, and she's like, I don't want my three girls in the military. Aww. So we had to honor our mother's wishes. So. That's, that's Trey gave to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Are your parents just super proud of you now? Are you all still close? Oh yeah. Our, our family were, we're all best super friends. Close. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, the family is so important. You guys yeah. know that. Mm -hmm. So we have his mom lives on the property. Oh, you'll the be log yeah. cabin that She'll you passed up. coming in. Yeah. Nice. That's her house. So yeah, we're all super tight. Yeah. The thing about when it comes to my, my brother and his kids, I mean, they're safe with him. They're safer with me. I mean, I'll be harder on them, kind of, and then, but then I won't because you know, uncle, you get they get to do stuff you can't do with your dad, right? You get yeah. to break that. That'd be that cool uncle. But with the twins. I, my, one of my brother and I talk about it, I was like, no, we're identical, which means his kids and my kids are closer than cut their brothers. But they showed up on a blood test to be that close. And we raise them accordingly. Having two personalities kind of uh, in one family, helping them manage this so much fun. Yeah. We, we're having the best time with this, this part. Yeah. She uses my kids for slave labor. Yeah, <laughs> well, pick up brass on the range. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's good for them. That's what they're character. For. Yeah, exactly. exactly. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> yeah. So you can do that job. I'll give you a more important one. Yeah, that's how I justify with my kids. But when I when I think of your kids, that there isn't anything that I wouldn't do. That they're almost like my kids because, you know, you're my you're my twin. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for your kids. Yeah. So I literally don't look at them differently either. Yeah. I love. There's some that piece of work. Man. <laughs> They're so funny. Well, sometimes you because you're twins, right? When you see some, them doing something, like why haven't you talked about that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I had had to we don't let each other do it. Um, yeah, the lash never quit. Remember, I had the little baby boy. That's that's my nephew. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Thank y'all so much for coming out here. I'm uh, yeah. great. Andrew, Absolutely. Do you have yeah. more questions? No, it's good. Okay. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. That was fun.